but perhaps it's also important to re-stress exactly how these oligarchs follow through in a bloodline manner. And one of the most important connections from the ancient world, the ancient dynasties, up into the modern are a group of people from Italy, from Venice specifically, that have dominated the world for many generations that have been loosely called the Black Venetians. Now this term, the Black Venetians or the Black Nobility, is their own term. This is not just a historical term used for them. This is one of their own terms. And they became known as the Black Nobility or the Black Venetians because literally their deeds were so black. Now, the word Phoenician, an old ancient Semitic race, the Phoenicians were like the um, elites of the Semites. Okay, we have the Semitic race. The Semitic race is the largest racial group uh, in the world. Well, we have many branches of the Semitic peoples. And the elites, you could say the royalty within the um, Semit Semitic race, were what we know as the Phoenician race. These are the people who built the Temple of Solomon, who were the great navigators, the great uh, mappers of the sky, and the great mathematicians and so on. Well, down into the modern world as we progress through the ages, the word Phoenician, as the Phoenicians settled in Italy, they became known as the Venetians, the Venetians. And they're worshippers of Venus. One of their gods or goddesses was literally Venetian. They're Venus worshippers. And that figures because if you're on the high seas, the stars and the moon and the luminaries are very important to you. The very word Lucifer actually goes back to the planet Venus. Venus is Lucifer. Planetary neighbor Venus was formed at the same time and in the same part of the early solar system as the Earth. And Venus was made with the same basic ingredients, the same gases and the same rocks. However, now the two planets are completely different. On Venus, days last longer than years and the planet rotates clockwise with the sun rising in the west and setting in the east. And the Venetians, we have many families making up the Venetian oligarchy, but the Longi and the Guelphs are of particular interest. Now, upon their move to Holland, the black Venetians created the great Amsterdam Bank, the financial hinge of the 17th century, and they also created the Dutch East India Company. They also controlled the finances of many royal dynasties, like the Stuarts. So they were lenders, financers of some of the royal families. They are also the promoters of Martin Luther, of Protestantism, Puritanism, the Jesuits, the Club of Rome, the later Freemasons, and most other secret societies. Through the House of Hanover, that's the House of Orange, they came to England and have been the dominating power since William III. What happened four or five thousand years ago was a lot of corruption over here. The Ammon priesthood, which has now morphed into the um, little country up here in the hills in the Alps called Switzerland. Schwesterland, the land of the sisters. Who would those sisters be, I wonder? Because Swiss, Swiss comes from Les Sœurs de, Sis, de Sisters of Isis. These guys, the Phoenicians, the word phony, you know, when someone's a phony, that comes from Phoenicia, because they are phonies. <laughs> and you get phonetics, language, because these were the alphabet people, right? They gave the alphabet, the current form of alphabet, from, went to Greece and then Rome, but it comes from Phoenicia, Tyre. This city was so dangerous that the, Assyri the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Greeks hated, everybody hated these people, they were killers. They set up Carthage, Rome destroyed Carthage because of these bastards. Sennacherib, a king of Assyria, and Esarhaddon, his son, and Ashurbanipal, 2,700 years ago, had a go at destroying Tyre. They had a, um, a city out in, in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and, and there was a causeway that this, and all the boats came here. This was, they controlled the seas, commerce. This is where our commerce comes from. Then Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it after Sennacherib, Esarhaddon and Ashurbanipal had a go. Then Alexander the Great dealt with them. We're talking big, big rulers that tried to get rid of these people because they were controlling everything. They controlled 
all of this, Sicily, the Greeks controlled this part. They controlled many, many cities. Eventually they came over here to Venice. And the Phoenicians are the Venetians. I hope I've spelt that right. Venetians, Phoenicians, these are the black nobility. When Rome was sacked, most of them went here. And where did they found Venice? On the water. Just like they did. Copycats, aren't they? Same people. Uh, and these guys, then they married into all the royal bloodlines, the blue bloods in Europe with their money. Because these are the gold bullion people, the commerce people. And these people founded the Jesuits. The Jesuits run the world. Scum of the earth, killers, murderers, blood guilty dogs. Killing our children. They run people trafficking, drug trafficking, the lot of it. And Queen Elizabeth is one of them. She's a bloodthirsty, evil entity. These people are killers. There's so much blood guilt that, that even the Bible says that the, uh, the smell of the blood of the death of all of God's witnesses go up to his nose and the stench of the blood of these people. Blood, blood, blood. Rome founded Paris, Rome founded London, they are Roman corporations. El London, the city of the Lord, El, the sun or Saturn. Paris, Swiss, Paris, for Isis. And what do you find in the centre of Paris? Well, you find the Notre Dame. Who's the Notre Dame? Well, that's Isis. Christina Huff, in her book, Venice, the Methodology of Evil, part three, she writes, Henry VIII had also thrown open the door for the cultural, political, and financial takeover of England by agents of the city-state of Venice. By the middle of the 1530s, Henry's government was in the hands of the Venetian agents and being shaped into a model of police state political terror. By the end of Henry's reign, Venetian bankers were in control of a burgeoning English foreign debt and dictating terms to the English throne. Within slightly over a century following Henry's death, England had been transformed into the usurious, slave-trading imperial power of Great Britain under the dictatorship of the Venetian party, which had been transplanted directly from the lagoons of Venice. That here we have the connection between the Stuarts, the Tudors, and these Venetians. And the takeover was implemented by Thomas Cromwell. This was the agent who convinced Henry VIII to buy in and to accept the money of the incoming Venetians. So this connection is very, very vital and important to understand how the Phoenician, Sumerian, Babylonian, uh, Mesopotamian, Nephilim concept, that bloodline ties into the modern oligarchs. There's a thread. It can be traced like anything. Uh, the congressman and uh, statesman, Lyndon LaRouche, from an American context, is one of the greatest experts on this. But there's many other works uh, talking about this connection. King William III of uh, Hanover, the, the Prince of Orange, and we have George Ludwig I, also of the House of Hanover. These are the two kings uh, specifically of the House of Orange coming out of Italy by way of Holland. They appear in the history books as being Dutch, Dutch kings, Dutch potentates, but their ancestry goes further back than that. Graham Lowry in How the Venetian Virus Infected and Took Over England writes, in December 1688 the armies of the Dutch Prince William of Orange invaded England, interrupting the Hobbesian nightmare the country had experienced under the deranged King Charles II and his brother James II. A worse nightmare was to follow when William seized the throne of James II, for he embodied a more highly distilled form of poison which Venice had perfected during its sway over the remains of the Dutch Republic. This outright usurpation is blithely referred to in British Venetian parlance as the glorious revolution, which should give you some idea of how little regard for truth prevails in these circles. Webster Tarpley in the book The Venetian Takeover of England writes, the oligarchical system of Great Britain is not autothonious product of English or British history. It represents rather the tradition which has been transplanted into the British Isles through a series of upheavals into England and Scotland from the Venetian oligarchy along with its philosophy, 
political forms, family fortunes, and imperial geopolitics. Jeffrey Steinberg in The Last Empire in the History of the World writes, these families constitute a financier oligarchy. They are the power behind the Windsor throne. They view themselves as the heirs to the Venetian oligarchy which infiltrated and subverted England from the period of 1509 to 1715 and established a new, more virulent Anglo-Dutch Swiss strain of the oligarchical system of Imperial Babylon, Persia, Rome and Byzantine. So there you have it. There is a direct paragraph that shows you the connection. Incidentally, Switzerland, as we mentioned earlier, is where the headquarters of world Freemasonry is. And over the door in Zurich, Switzerland, you can go there yourself. And that's where the courts are. That's where the so-called uh, charities of the world, like the Red Cross, are located, and many others. It's also where the world banks are kept, those secretive world banks. Well, of course they're secretive. You don't, the oligarchs don't want you tracking the checks, following the money. But you also have the headquarters of world Freemasonry. And over the door, plain as day for everyone to see, it says in Latin, Ordo ab chaos, order out of chaos. Implemented by the likes of Albert Pike and many of the politicians of the world, you create wall-to-wall -wall evil, wall-to-wall -wall debauchery, wall-to-wall -wall license, and wall-to-wall -wall chaos. You fund the gangs, you fund the uh, terrorists of the world, you create so much upheaval that the masses who are your real enemy, your real rivals, just come to you in a big line saying, help us, what can we do? Let's strengthen you know, the powers of government. If it worked for Adolf Hitler and Genghis Khan, it works for anybody. Scythians were called Uman Manda by the Chaldeans, people of Manda. And Manda is the name of Saturn. Phoenicians regarded El Saturn as the chief deity. Eusebius informs us that El, a name used also in the Bible as a name for God, was the name of Saturn. In Persia, Saturn was known as Kivan, or Kaiwan. Of the affairs of the Jews, the truest history, because the most in accordance with their places and names out of San Cuniathon of Beirut. He received the records from Jeremiah, the priest of the god Yahweh. He dedicated his history to Abibal, king of Beirut, and was approved by him and by the investigators of truth in his time. Now the times of these men fall even before the date of the Trojan War, and approach nearly to the times of Moses, as is shown by the successions of the kings of Phoenicia. In San Cuniathon, he made a complete collection of ancient history from the records in the various cities and from the registers in the temples, and wrote in the Phoenician language with a love of truth, lived in the reign of Samiramis, the queen of the Assyrians, who is recorded to have lived before the Trojan War or in those very times. And the works of San Cuniathon were translated into the Greek tongue by Philo of Byblos. The very word Lucifer actually goes back to the planet Venus. Venus is Lucifer. So when you talk about Luciferianism, you're talking about the idea that there is a highly intelligent, well-informed occult. And the word occult simply means hidden. So Luciferian means or implies that there is an occult or hidden knowledge, hidden wisdom that you are not privy to know anything about, which is the real truth about where the earth came from. It's the real truth about where we humans originated. So it's called Luciferianism because it's dealing with the word Lucifer, which means a bright, brilliant star. And so this is why today Luciferianism means, like you said, it has to do with Illuminati. These are highly intelligent, well-informed criminals who at the very top of the world are using us to make a lot of money off of us, buying and selling us and treating us like animals. And so the Luciferians are the people we would refer to as Illuminati.